back out to play in the Peak District today. I've got a new tent to test out and it's made from DCF or Dyneema composite fabric or Cuban fibre as it used to be known. I've heard a lot of good things about them but is it just hype or are they really worth the money? Let's go and find out. Well, that's where I'm camping tonight. Probably half an hour, 45 minutes from here. I love this place. The landscape is so unique. Right, let's see what this tent's all about. So this is the tarp tent Notchley and it is a DCF or Dyneema composite fabric tent. Weighs in at only 607 grams and that includes the little poles that's in it, the tent pegs, the bags and everything. Let's get it pitched up and have a closer look. So it takes a minimum of only four pegs to pitch this up. Six is the ideal. It's a trekking pole tent. Poles need to be 110 centimeters. That's it. It's a lovely tent. The material though, it's very, um, it's very different if you're not used to it. Two doors, two vestibules. This is a double skin tent. Just need to pull that in or under the trekking pole a little bit. The doors have got little magnetic clips on them. Yeah, let's pull the inner out. Just move the pole a little bit. We've got a little bit of a sunset. Those colours are awesome. What a spot. Better get the rest of that gear out of the bag. Midges are out. Guess who's left his head net in the van? Testing a new sleeping pad. It's not out yet. Very lightweight. This is brilliant by the way. The new, well new for me, flex tail, tiny pump, X2 I think it is. I've had the original for donkeys. But this one, it's got lantern on it as well. How long do you reckon to pump it up? About a minute, I think.
gonna enjoy this while I can. We've got rain in the middle of the night. Two or three people camping tonight. They've all stopped to say hello, which is nice. They watch the videos as well. Look at that. I've been thinking about getting a DCF tent for my multi-day long distance hikes for a couple of different reasons. Firstly, is that these tents are incredibly strong and incredibly lightweight. This material was originally designed for sails on boats. So it needs to be really strong and tear resistant. However, it's difficult to machine for tents and not everybody's kitted out for it. So that is one of the reasons why it's really expensive to manufacture these. So another good thing about DCF unlike nylon it doesn't sag when it gets wet it doesn't absorb any water into it so when you get a sill nylon tent or a polyester tent it does absorb some of that water and then when you pack it away it's still basically wet whereas this you can just wipe it and it will dry however because the material doesn't stretch sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult to pitch so you have to be more selective about where you put the tent because like with a sill nylon tent, if you've got a little saggy bit, sometimes you can just stretch it out. You can't really do that with these. So the majority of DCF tents are made by what they call cottage makers, small independent companies like Tarp Tent or Durston or Z Packs, Z Packs as they say in America. Most of these companies are in America or Canada and it costs you an arm and a leg to get them shipped over to the UK. This tent is around $600, I think, plus all of the additional shipping costs that you get with it. I didn't want to make a mistake and get the wrong one. So I did reach out to Tarp Tent and they've kindly loaned me this tent and they said I can possibly loan a couple of others just so I can get an idea of which one suits me best before I shell out the big bucks. So big thanks to Tarp Tent for lending me this tent. So a lot of people have said to me that Dyneema tents are not really suitable for UK conditions. I think that's because a lot of them are single skin tents. This one is a double skin tent. However, I've used quite a few single skin tents here in the UK and the DCF ones, they tend to be a little bit larger in footprint. And it's only really a problem if your sleeping bag is touching the side. As long as the tent is long enough, which the majority are for me, I'm not gonna have that problem of a wet sleeping bag. And if there's a little tiny bit of condensation drips on, then I've got sleeping bags and quilts that are, have got Pertex shield, fabrics and I've got hydrophobic down in them so I should have no issues at all. So I think it's the price that puts a lot of people off these tents and they think that they're not really worth the money. Well that really depends on how much you're going to use it. So as I said this tent is $600 that's comparable to some Terra Nova tents. It's cheaper than Hilleberg tents. It's a totally different market to those kind of tents. It is for lightweight, long distance hikes really. If a tent costs 600 quid, but you use it for 60 nights, that's only 10 pound a night, which isn't too bad in the big grand scheme of things. Especially if you want something that's lightweight when you're putting a lot of miles in.
Yeah, yeah. Right, so this right. is Dan. It's Dan. His That's brother Dan. Fergus. Hello. And also up here. So what we got here? Yeah, it's a. That's a Van Gogh Nevis. I think it's a two hundred. Two hundred. Yeah. So that's my old tent. Okay. And, um, just, uh, just lending it, lending yeah. it to the brother. See, this is a, the F ten helium, the Van Gogh one. Okay. Quite um, nice these, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I'm very like compact, lightweight. So. Yeah. So uh, where are you guys from? Uh, we're from North London, a place yeah. called Barnet. And you've travelled all the way up here. Yeah. Borrowed dad's car, come all the way up. <laughs> <laughs> First time in Kinder Scout, so it's cool. Lovely. What do you think of it? Oh, great, great. The views are the views are unreal. It's a shame the weather's not been a little bit better, but we've had a nice sunset. So yeah. This sort, this particular landscape, there's, I've never seen anything like it anywhere else yeah. with all these boulders and stuff. It is yeah, amazing. It's, it's sort of brilliant. come over that crest there, and it's just like, yeah, uh, yeah. It's like a scene from a, from something completely. Martian. It's exactly, alien landscape, alien landscape, that's what I've called yeah. it before. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's a good, good description for sure. Yeah. So the headroom isn't too bad. There's plenty of room in these vestibules. That one's just got me trainers hung up. So we do a little bit of rain in the night. At the minute it's not a breath of wind. So it's not the best test for a tent, but We'll see what the night brings. Absolutely bunging it down. Sunrise was apparently 10 minutes ago, but we've got no sight of that here. We're looking at the Met Office, it's going to be pretty grim all morning. And there's yellow warnings of thunderstorms from around 9 o'clock. It bunged it down from 2am to 4am. It had a little breather for an hour, and then the wind and the rain came about 5 o'clock. Some of the surrounding bits are flooding. I'm pitched on a raised up little bit of grass, so it's all right where the tent is. The tent's done a cracking job, to be fair. There's no condensation, no water coming at all. I did need to put the earplugs in last night, though. All right, I'm going to get most of my stuff packed away and hopefully get a little window of opportunity to drop the tent. There's no point hanging around this morning. I'm wide awake. Sometimes it's a struggle to get your tent in your pack if you want to stick it down the side. Little tip is to get a tent shaped dry sack, use your inflatable pillow. Shove that down the side of your pack just before you fill it, then start shoving your sleeping bag and stuff in. And then right at the end, you can pull this out shove your tent in and deflate it. Really impressed with that quilt again. Good value for money. I think it's on sale at the moment as well. I'll put a link in the description along with all the other gear that I've used today. A few discount codes as well might help you out. So the ground sheet inner, bone dry. We got a little swimming pool underneath. Dyneema is very waterproof. So that's everything packed apart from my cook set. That's not going inside the dry sack because it's a little bit wet. And then we've got the tent to drop. Don't think the rain's gonna hold off. It's forecast to rain all morning, so I'm just gonna put my poncho on and go for it. Right, wish me luck. Pretty grim. Almost a swamp. I've been caught out pitching in places like this before. You have to make sure that you're on the slightly higher bit of ground. Although that little tiny puddle there's got me. 
packaging on a lot of Dyneema tents are quite large, so it's a bit more difficult to get it in your pack. This is where the little magic happens from the inflated pillow. That's left the gap down here now. Just shove the tent in. Look how grim it is. This was beautiful last night. Now I've got to see if I can get over the crowd and cloth. Hopefully the water's not flowing too fast. That's not looking good. I've not seen it like this for a while. This is where I normally cross. Right, let's just go for it. Not sure it's any easier here. This looks the easiest, but I'm still going to jump. <laughs> Good test for the grip anyway. Right, I'm just going to summarise. As you can see, it's pretty rotten. It's not filming weather. So, DCF tents, are they any good? Well, I was pleasantly surprised. The top tent notch Lee, for 609 grams, it held its own in some pretty typical UK weather. Don't get me wrong, it's not a winter tent. It's not a summit tent when it's blowing a hooli, but it is a backpacking tent and it's a very good one. But the big question is, is DCF worth it or good value for money for the UK? I think that's subjective. Is a pint worth five or six quid? Is a mountain bike worth three or four grand? It depends on what you're going to use it for. If you do lots of long distance hikes and when you're going to be camping along the way, I think it's a good investment. So I am going to get a DCF tent but the notch Lee is not going to be the one for me purely because of the headroom at either end so I've been using the Durston X mid and it's got really good headroom all the way through so something with a little bit more space like that something that you can just peg out four corners and get a really good pitch as well it's got to be lightweight and good space inside. I don't want much, do I? Anyway, that's it for this one. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about what you think of DCF tents. If you've got one, how do you find it? Thanks for watching. Make sure to hit the like button and I'll see you next time.